Hello, everybody. Today we have Caden over here. He's a financial advisor friend from work. Well, what might be my work still? I don't know. So we're trying to decide. Anyway, just going to sit down with him today and go over a plan to make sure that me and Hannah are on track for what we want to do for retirement. I was going to retire in a couple of years, but I can't afford to because I don't get all my retirement. So now I'm kind of leaning a different direction and we're going to sit down and figure out exactly what we need to do to get there. All right, guys, we're going to have Caden go over real quick just uh, what their basic general plan is. And then I'll show you guys what we came up with at the end here. What do you got for us? Hey guys, um, I'm a financial specialist with Cambridge Financial and our job is to build a personalized plan for you guys. Someday we wanna retire and may maybe soon and maybe way in the future, but we want to build a personalized plan for you guys and we wanna help you set aside money uh, to play with. Everyone wants to have fun and wants to buy new toys and it's important to budget that and also let your money work for you. And so our job as a financial specialist and advisors with Cambridge is to build a plan that protects you from long-term problems like 08 and crises like that and also give you the opportunity to save money and grow money in different stages of life. And so we break up our model into a protection, a savings and a growth model. And we sit down with anyone that's willing to to actually be, become disciplined in their finances and, and start to put a plan together. We want to work with you every year. You know, we wanna sit down and have our annual meeting to see where you're going, what you want and, and how we can help. So as we're sitting down with Micah today, you guys will see a, a great example of what we're doing for him and his family to see how, how we're able to protect him help him save money and help him save enough money for, for retirement and along with all his other toys that he has yes. right now. So I have a lot of fun and a lot of hobbies. So, <laughs> so they're expensive. And yes. so it's important to budget that in there and give him the money that he needs to, to have fun with and enjoy life. We don't want to just tile your money up and let you guys live poor. So set, so that one day you can retire. No, we want you to have fun <laughs> and, and enjoy your money as well. So that's kind of our job and we want to, we, we'd love to work with all you guys. Awesome. Thanks, man. So yeah, here's a little uh, planning sheet basically that we're going to go through and fill out today. We kind of went over it. Oh, what was that? About a month ago? About a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. The but yeah. And obviously holidays are a mess, guys. As you can see, I still have my tree in the background and <laughs> decorations all over the floor. And yes, it is January 4th and my Christmas lights are still up. They're not on, but they're still up. Uh, we're going to get through this and then along the way, I'll stop and do a couple little clips here and there and show you guys kind of what we're coming up with. And then at the end, I'll show you kind of what we came up with, what my plan is. And then as I go throughout the year, I'll kind of update you guys here and there on what the progress I've made on my plan is. What's up, guys? So apologies. Caden had to make it to another appointment, and I totally spaced actually talking about the plan that we came up with. So I am over here at Derek and Lori's showing them how to edit video. And I will introduce you guys to them here in just a minute, kind of give you a little bit of a heads up on what they got going on. Moving on, I guess, to the financial plan that we came up with today. So I kind of talked to Caden before a little bit, and I kind of know what I want. Just uh, rough, rough numbers for you guys that I came up with long, long ago in high school, actually. I wanted to retire with about a million and a half to a million dollars in the bank. That way I could afford to travel around, live my life, not have to worry about money. I wanted to make $100,000 a year and have a house paid for by the time I was 40. I failed at one, I failed at two, and I failed at three. I mean, I'm close, but I'm not quite there. With me and Hannah together, we do make that. With just me, it's not. And I don't want that. I want to be able to make more so she doesn't have to work so much or vice versa. I mean, I'll let her make the money. I'm not going to be one of those guys. I don't care. She can make it all if she really wants to. I got to stay busy one way or another. Anyway, the plan that we came up with today basically is, most of you guys probably know this, get your debt paid off. We almost had all of our debt paid off this year and then had a few things happen. Uh, family members got into some trouble financially and non-financially, I guess. And so we kind of helped them out and then had some financial issues of our own, nothing major, but just enough to just barely put us back into some more debt. The goal we came up with was to, in the next two months, get all of our dumb credit card debt paid off. However we choose to do that, I have some money in one of my retirement accounts that I can access at a super low interest rate. So we're going to pull some of that, pay off part of my stupid debt and get that payment down to where we're actually paying off all the principal, not the interest, and then use that extra money to pay off some of our other debts and get ourselves debt free. My goal is to get debt free other than my house by the end of the year. Working from there, I'll meet with Caden again and we will move forward and start investing a lot more. 
along with what I was telling you guys earlier too is protection. So I have life insurance. I've always had life insurance through work, but I needed more. And with our goals right now, we were severely deficient in what we wanted to do in life if one of us was to die. And that's something you have to do is protect yourself. We are going to up our life insurance policy, turn it from a term life insurance policy to a cash value or open another account. There's so many different life insurance plans and I can't keep up with them. Can't even remember the name of that policy. Anyway, it's like a cash value, but a little bit different, slightly different. But it's going to cost us a little bit more a month, but we will actually have money tax-free at the end of it. So I will go over that once we get that set up and let you guys know how that works. Not a lot going on right now with the financial planning stuff, just getting debt paid off, focusing on that, and then moving forward from there. Lori and Derek have stepped up, and they are the first ones to have actually stepped out and shot something. I've been doing videos like this for years, basically, with the Hidden Instinct stuff. Um, and I'm trying to get all these guys involved in, involved in one way or another with helping people out. Here is Lori and Derek, mainly Lori right now. We'll get to Derek later. But uh, yeah, here's uh, just a couple real quick questions for her. And I'm going to ask the same thing of everyone else. Their steps and their journey to working for themselves and doing what they really enjoy instead of just going through the grind on a day-to-day -day basis. So I got a <laughs> list of questions to, to go over right here. And my first question on the list is what you didn't like about working for someone else. And go. <laughs> Well, wait, what? Oh, I didn't even hear. Say it again. Okay, Lori. So what did you not like about working for someone else? Oh my gosh. There's a lot of things. I could go about on about this for hours. You want to know what my biggest thing was? I always believed in what was going on more than they did. I believed in the project more than they did. I believed in the success more than they did. And it was so hard because I cared more about their project, their company, their goal, what they wanted to do, the impact they wanted to make in the world way more than they did. I was the one that was staying late. I was the one working overtime. I was the one that was putting my heart and soul into all of it. And they just... They didn't have it clock out as soon as five o'clock came or noon. It didn't matter. I just, I was the one there. I was the one there putting my heart and soul into it. I can't do this. Yeah, right you now. can. It's perfect. <laughs> oh no, God. you're doing exactly what you need to do. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that's a lot of issue. A lot of us have. That's one of the issues I had. I felt like I was putting more effort in than everybody else. I really just didn't want to do it anymore. If I'm putting all the effort in and not getting any of the return, and I'm not saying I have to get all of the return. That's not what this is about. It's about getting the return that you put in the, the emotional investment more than anything into the projects or the job itself or the people that you work with. If you're not getting anything emotionally back out of it, it's pointless. You, you can't sustain that. And that's where I'm at. And back to Lori. <laughs> okay. I didn't like that. There was um, somebody else had control over my financial destiny. Didn't like that at all. He didn't like. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I knew my worth. I knew what my um, my work ethic and everything else was. I knew, yeah, just I knew my worth. And I didn't like having to ask people for that. I didn't want to have to just wait until the next time came up. It didn't matter what company. I worked in corporate. I was very successful there. I was also very successful in private companies, multi-million dollar companies and multi-billion dollar companies and it was always the same it didn't matter if it was private or if it was corporate somebody else always had control over my financial destiny and also how far i would move up i didn't have control of that dude that is exactly what i hate about my job that is exactly what damn near everybody i know hates about their job they are not in control of their financial destiny sometimes even their their physical well-being or their emotional well-being is affected by their job, not just finances. And this isn't always just about money, guys. This is about living the life that you want to live. If someone else is in control of it, and I'm going to talk a lot about this in and out, and I have some pretty weird ideas, and some of them may have already been said by other people, but I don't know. I don't read a lot of books. So anyway, it's just my ideas. You've got to be happy. You have to be happy. Regardless of how much money you're making, you got to be happy. Anything else on any of that? Yes. <laughs> yes. So working with corporate, it was very black and white. It was very much just, they didn't care. They didn't care if you had a flat tire on the road. They didn't care about any of that stuff. It was very black and white and they didn't care about your happiness. Private 
part of that. They would say family matters, but did it? Like I had to fight for every single hour I had off. I had to fight for every single personal time or anything like that. I actually did a lot of changes in that company. It's basically just control. You're exactly right, Micah. It's control over your life, over your destiny, your health, your wellness. It's more freedom. It's funny because that is exactly where I'm at. Like I, I probably could have said the exact same things you just said about my job, literally the exact same thing. Everyone that I know, especially in this little project we're doing, feels basically the same way. They are not in control and no one likes being out of control of their life. No. And then when you work for a company that's out of control or a company that doesn't have good communication, like that's even worse. And then you have a lot of different personalities and egos and just all kinds of things. You know, it just gets messy. I've worked for both sides. (laughs) So it's so interesting because it's very black and white on one side or it's very emotional on the other side corporate versus private. All right, guys, my next question here is this one. What made you make the leap to quitting? That's the struggle everyone has. Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) So there was a situation that had happened. You know, there always is whenever something just finally, it just kind of builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up until there's an explosion, right? There was an explosion. And I was told that I didn't value other people and that I treated them very badly. If anybody knows me, <laughs> you know that is not who I am. Absolutely not true. <laughs> That's not who I am. I saw the perception of what me being in my job had given somebody else of me. This was somebody that did not know me very well, that did, was not in the area. They were just here for an event. What happened is I realized I had stayed in the situation for too long. When you're in situations where people aren't treating you right, they're not treating you with respect, they're not valuing your worth, they're not appreciating you or um, giving you gratitude, all of those things, what happens is it's very common. That's what goes on. It just keeps building and building and building until it comes out sideways. And it comes out in a way that is not a pleasant experience, right? On that day, I remember, I just literally looked that person in the eye and just went, huh. Okay then. And I literally turned around and I walked away. And then I called Derek. <laughs> and I said, I said, can I quit my job today? And he said, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. See, that's when you know what's bad is because he knows that you're not happy regardless of what you say and how you act. He knows just by how you are you are because you're not you because you're unhappy. Yeah, exactly. And so here I was, I had, um, you know, my perception of what was going on is that I had this whole entire company on my shoulders and what happens if I just walked away, you know? And honestly, I had put all of that responsibility on myself. So I realized my part in it. But what I realized that day is that I was never going to allow somebody else to see me in a different light than what I truly am. I was never going to allow that to happen again. I was never going to let my feelings come out in a negative way because I wasn't being treated right. I wasn't being appreciated. I wasn't being valued. That was me staying in a job for too long. Can I I want to add something to that? (laughs) Absolutely. Just so we're clear, what she just said, I heard multiple times. And every time I told her, quit, just quit. Just quit. And that's the thing a lot of people, they wait. They keep putting it off. They keep putting it off. They talk about it, but then uh, then it changes. You know, they just go back to their regular day to day routine because that's what's normal to them. You know, habits are incredibly hard to break. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And security, security of a job. These are all concepts, guys, that are common between all of us. They are the same fears, the same hesitancies, the same problems with actually being able to make it work. I'll try and come up with a good list and talk with each individual person about each individual one of these and how to overcome it as we go. I've got a pretty good idea how I want to make this work, but nothing's going to be perfect, just like our journey into doing this. I'm going to do my best along the way, but there's going to be issues, but that's okay because we'll overcome them, and hopefully we can help you guys out with some of the same things that you're dealing with, and you can learn from our successes and failures and have a common thread, I guess. I, I, I just see it too much. I've seen it way too much in my friends and way too much in my family, and I want to be able to help people move on to something that is satisfying to them. All right, guys, the next question we got on the list, and this is going to be a transition into the little video Lori shot tonight. 
proud of you guys for doing this. Thank you so much for actually doing this because I've been trying to get everybody to do this for years and just really never had a reason to do it. Well, now we do. So we're going to do it. <laughs> How did you prepare for this transition? Basically, you know, you're, you're literally, I don't want to say throwing away, you're leaving a negative part of your life behind and moving on to a positive and creating a more positive one. It's a really hard leap to do. People are very habit forming, love security. They don't like change. You know, whether we want to admit it or not, change is difficult. That's one of the biggest problems we will all have with this. I will have Lori answer this question and then we will transition into her videos of the transition, transitional oh, year. transformational year. Transformational. I like that way better than transition, transfer, transfer. <laughs> See, I can't even talk. Transformational. <laughs> 